Hello, everybody. Welcome uh, to to this live. Uh, I'm very excited for this live. I've never done something like this before, but I'm um, going to have someone that I love their music. Their I've been a big fan of it of all the music and of all that he does for a couple years now. So it's it'll be fun to have him. Um, Jonathan McReynolds. If y'all haven't heard of Jonathan McReynolds, well, let's introduce y'all to him because he is excellent. So let's, I'm gonna see how if this works here. We're just gonna bring him right on and get right to it. So let's see if he, Yo! Hey! Jonathan, how you doing? Up, I'm pretty good, how about you? Doing well. You've just been on, you've been just on fire with uh, talking to everybody. I've been <laughs> watching a few of your, uh, how do you not get tired of talking to so many people? Well, luckily, you know, we're in a position where we don't have to actually be around a lot of people anyway from day to day. So <laughs> this is actually right. cool, man. I'm actually having a really good time, you know, talking to, you know, people that I haven't gotten to really have a full conversation with. And so this is an honor. You know, it's kind of working um, in a different way for me. I see you have a full quarantine <laughs> going on. I wish I could. How come, look at me. Nothing's happening. Man, I saw you cleaning up there. You're you're not following the trend. You're you're keeping yourself tidy and clean. No, I tried. I, I'm not. I'm not doing a good job. I tried, and um, nothing's happening. It's just this is it. I think it's gonna be it for me for the rest of my life, man. I, it's kind of sad. Oh man. Well, that's all right. My hair is getting longer up here, but I don't need nothing. I feel you there. I'm starting to feel like a puffball with my hair right now, but. It's it's all right. Well, John, it's great to have you. Thanks, uh, thanks for uh, including me in all of the interviews you're doing. I'm excited to introduce my fans to you as well. I, I know a lot of yeah. them have heard me. I've done it. I've posted a couple of your songs on my Instagram as well. But um, I just so to go back uh, like a couple years ago. One of my friends who who sings gospel, he was like, hey, "Have you ever heard of?" It's like, have you ever sung Jonathan McReynolds? And I, I hadn't heard of your name yet. So I was like, Jonathan McReynolds. He's like, I feel like you could really, he's like, your tone just reminds me of something of his. And I feel like you should learn some of his songs. So that's why I became introduced to your stuff. And uh, nice. I just, I loved it. I just thought it was, I was like, wait, what? It, it, it's like the music just felt like it was, it's like how a buddy, like if you're in the car on a drive and just having a talk about life, that's what it felt like. So I was just like, oh wow. my gosh, it just kind of blew my mind. So Thanks. I'm excited to, well, we'll look into, and then I, y'all, sometimes I'm amazed at how people can, uh, sorry, and, and then we'll get to the music because this is supposed to be a listening party. No, do your thing, man. How, this is, this, we're on your live, so <laughs> you, could do, you could do a full dance number. It's fine, I'm fine, okay, all right. Just go ahead and give it to us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do your it's thing. Fine. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, no. But um, just, it felt like I had a bit of a fan moment just because I never, I never like traveled to go to someone's concert before. And when I saw that you were playing in Memphis, you know, I live in Nashville area and that was like a three hour drive. But I was like, I'm not gonna miss out on this. And then I was like, wow. on my way there, I brought my sister with me. And I was just, I was like, this must be what some of like our fans, some of my fans, when I'm like, why would they take time to go out and spend hours going somewhere to a city far away from them and just to listen to my music and stuff. But I'm like, you know what, sometimes it's just, I, I was just like, I just want to hear this live. And this wow. is my chance. I had to move my flight. I was going to the UK the next, I was supposed to already have gone, but I pushed it back a day just so I could go to this concert. Wow. And when you, you had reached out and you said, hey, are you still around? And I was just like, shoot, I'm, I'm on my way back because I hadn't even started. I didn't even pack yet or anything. I'm a, I'm a last minute kind of guy, but it was I, so I, I good. Am. 
And y'all, everyone in his audience knows how to sing. <laughs> like they all are singing. I was like, what is going on? While we were waiting in line, like everyone outside was just singing in, in harmonies. And I was like, wow, this is That's crazy. Funny. And then I went <laughs> to your concert in uh, January this year before everything started locking down, mm -hmm. which was also great. And I went with a buddy of mine and we just loved it. But same thing, like the person next to me and the person right here and all that, they were all just singing. Um, I'm like, every person at this concert could have their own concert and it'd sound great. But that's funny. I'm just impressed that that's the kind of people that you bring. I don't know, you, you bring, you're just, you draw talented people to you. So it was pretty fun. Oh, wow. That's, that's so. pretty cool. Now, I mean, you know, it, I, I I definitely love my concerts even more than, you know, other things that we might have to do. We always love our own tour because people that come, you know, they know the music, they're singing along. So it's just, it's straight fun. It's not about presenting a new song that, you know, you're worried if people are going to like or not. It's all just about having fun and enjoying and celebrating the music that God gave us. And so, uh, man, I'm honored. Thank you for coming. When I, when I found out that you were coming uh, to that Memphis show, I was like, really? Are you, really? I, I'm thinking maybe you live <laughs> close. I didn't peg you as a Memphis guy, but you know, I'm like, okay, maybe maybe he lives out here. I'm but not. now hearing that you travel and all that, man, man, that's just that's such an honor, man. You know, you're you're pretty big time, and and yes, your your fans absolutely love you. You know, and oh. <laughs> and and the reason why I know this is because my cousin is one of them. <laughs> so I have a cousin, Sydney. She is 28, and she is absolutely the biggest. Do you have like a name, like the 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 arch, the Archies, the Archers, or something Archies like that? Just your fan Archangels. Club? Yeah, they. Yeah. The Archangels. Archies. Oh, yeah, you go. I like that. Archies. I like Archangels. that. She's definitely an Archangel for sure. Oh man. And she absolutely she's, loves you. She gave me a list sweet. of questions to ask you. Yeah, <laughs> and. Um, they were all real deep questions. They were all like, you know, what? I don't know. I can't even remember. It's like, how did uh, how did Les Miserables affect your music? I don't know. It was just stuff like that. Oh, she must really pay gosh. attention to your bio and your movements. <laughs> and so, Sydney, yeah, you're, so you're, you're killing Sydney. me. Oh, yeah. man. That's so sweet. Well, I I know this is for you. We, you know, we're having a listening party. Y'all, Jonathan has a new music coming out this Friday which we're all excited about. So we're going to be listening to some of his, some clips of his new songs. So um, if you want, I, I feel you, you're you welcome on behalf of Sydney to ask questions. Um, the Les Miserables, <laughs> we can get to the Les Miserables thing too, I guess. You might have to keep me on track though. I tend to, or I all good, ask, all good. I don't know. But um, let's let's go ahead and listen to one of the clips of these songs. And uh, yeah, yeah. All right. songs you have heard Let's start with uh, one called "Best Thing." Does that work? Yeah. All right, here we go, y'all. This is called "Best Thing." Jonathan McReynolds. Sometimes life can weigh on your shoulders. Pressure too heavy for me to show. But we, I just hand it over You take the load and make it light Whatever's left to make it right For me, God for me Oh, and it just and it gets good and it, and it cuts off there. So oh, it good. cut off? Oh, man. <laughs> that, that hurt me. Yeah. I found oh, my dude. life when I lose it in you. I gain control when I give it to you. I find myself, or I save myself when I let you save me. The best thing I can do for me is you. Mm. Oh, man, yeah. that is so good. And that there's something Thank that you, you said like learning to hand it over yeah i think that's a beautiful process you know that's a beautiful thing when you can hand things over to god so i i do have a question because 
it seems like from listening to your music, you, you, you take a lot of time to think about things and think about what your relationship is like with God and with other people. And so, so I, I wonder, because it's so wonderful when you can hand it over to God, but what, a, what, what would you say for people, because there are a lot of people who know about God, they know of him, they've heard about his word, but what advice would you give to someone who may not know how they're holding on to something so tight and they don't know how to let go. It's like, oh, it's almost like sacred nature. They don't know how to just tight, loosen the grip that they have so that God can take it from them. Do you have any advice on how to let go? Um, hmm. The advice on how. I think you just sometimes have to recognize your own, like, frailty. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's only so, we have limits. We have limits. Because, you know, there's only so much hurt we can endure. There's only so much of a person's heart we can actually see. There's only so many moves we can actually make. So much of what happens in our lives is happening miles away <laughs> in meetings and boardrooms that, that we're not anywhere close to. You know, somebody right now is on your Instagram deciding if they want to DM you or not. There's so many things that just you don't actually have control over. And... Uh, you know, I think part of life and part of this Christian journey is learning how to just, you know, recognize that you haven't been in control of anything this whole time. You know, it's always been kind of up to God or up to other, you know, other factors. So, you know, it's kind of like I have no other choice but to trust God, you know, in this in these type of things. Because I, I just think that even some of the great things that have happened in my life, it didn't just come directly from me just working hard and doing well. There was just, there, there was something that God decided to make happen and it happened. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess just learning just how little, you have a lot of impact over your life and over yourself, but then you don't. <laughs> and so, you know, you know, just making sure that you, you understand who's actually in control here and giving it to him. Mm. That is so true. You know, what's interesting for me is I feel like what I have a hard time letting go a lot of times is my own doubt and my own lack of belief in myself. So even mm. from the beginning, like before I went on American Idol and things, I was just like, that's not, it's like an opportunity comes before me and I already, and it's like, I'm pushing it away saying, I'm not, I'm not ready for that. I can't do that. And I'm so I'm so thankful that God didn't didn't say, okay, fine, I'm gonna move on to someone else and give them the opportunity. It's like he was patient and said, I'm gonna give you a moment to think about this and take time to trust in me because I wanna give this opportunity to you. And I'm like, I, I'm I don't know anything about music business. I don't know how to network with people very well, none of that. And yet God still allowed me to he gave me music. And he gave me the chance to be on American Idol, get a record label, release a, albums and stuff since, you know, and go on tour to this day. But it was so strange because for me, I didn't feel like I had asked. I didn't say, God, please give me this. Can you give me that yeah. one? It's like, I kept saying, but God, I don't, why are you giving this to me? Well, I'm not worthy of this. And I, you're giving me, I don't know. I, I don't know what this has to do with this song, but. I've had to learn how to just basically shut up and just say, instead of, but why, but why this, but why not? Just say, you know what? Thank you. I'm going to learn from what you give to me. But I'm not going to lie. It's it's hard for me to let go sometimes of that fear and say, it's almost like, I think it's like a false thing in my head that I think my fear is going to keep me safe. If I just stay mm. inside and don't go for things, don't try that's why I love that song. Your song "Try" is so good too. Yeah. yeah. But um. No, I, that's beautiful, man. I sometimes I think as all of us, you know, we feel like our fear will keep us safe. If yeah. I can just stay afraid of it, <laughs> then it can't hurt me. It can't mm -hmm. kill me. If I just kind of stay out of it, and not really fully dive in, then you know that'll give me an opportunity to kind of save myself. Just in case, if I don't dive into the deep end, then at least I can get my feet on the ground and kind of stay, keep my head above water. And I think that's just a, a beautiful thing you said. And yeah, man, I feel the same way. I didn't ask for this. I didn't, 
I didn't even know to ask for this. I don't even feel like, you know, I may be like you, I'm an introvert. You know, we, we do well alone and we do well, you know, just singing. Uh, we miss when music had nothing to do with, you know, fans or business or anything like that. Uh, we, we wish that we could approach everything kind of purely. But one thing that I wrote, um, I actually have it on my on a board in, in the next room over there. Um, in 2019, in the beginning of 2019, I wrote this out on the board. And the, it says, a lack of confidence is a lack of faith. A lack of confidence is a lack of faith. I know that we sometimes feel like we are doing the right thing by not being confident and being like, I don't know if I can make it. And yeah, but I remember since the very beginning, God told me he's not setting me up to fail. He's not setting you up for embarrassment. He's not setting you up to put you on a platform just for you to embarrass yourself if you are approaching it humbly and understanding that he's the giver of these gifts and it's not just you earning it yourself. That's sometimes why he decides to give opportunities to people that aren't qualified or don't deserve it or never ask for it because we are very sure that it's him that gave it to us and not our own goodness. Mm. Wow. Amen. That's beautiful. Yeah, man. Could, could you say, you, you had said that lyric at the beginning. Could you repeat those lyrics again, what you were saying, so I can remember them? Uh, sometimes, sometimes life can weigh upon your shoulders. Pressure that's too heavy for us to shoulder. But when I learn to hand it over, he takes the load and makes it light. He, and whatever's wrong, he makes it right for me. Is that, is that what you said? There's something else you had said. Maybe it wasn't lyrics, but... Maybe it's just what you felt in the lyrics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's beautiful. Man. I think that's what I said. Now, I'm really, it's really, you know how tough it is to kind of just say the lyrics as opposed to try to sing the whole song? <laughs> it's kind of like, uh, twinkle, twinkle, little star. How I wonder what you are, you know? Um, but yeah, so yeah. I think that's what I said. If I didn't... Cool. Um, well, I'm not, not surprised. If it wasn't, I'll go back. I'll go back and, and listen to what you said. But it was, that was great. I feel like I'm getting my own little... Well, the full thing's going to come out tomorrow anyway, so... That's that's right. The full, the full right. EP right. is coming out. Um, we're gonna, we have a whole visual album, a visual EP that's going to come with it. So, you know, 27 minutes or so of, of straight music and video and me doing all my best... Uh, Boys to Men and Backstreet Boy impressions. So, All right. uh, be sure to watch that, huh? So we're gonna be sure to watch moves. that. Oh yeah, um, I'm a huge uh, nice. boy band fan, so uh, I'm sure that I was thinking of them in some of those moments. But uh, yeah, nice. so watch it. It's coming on tomorrow. Uh, uh, it's gonna premiere on YouTube Thursday night, which it'll be midnight uh, for. Um, People in New York, but like people in California, it'll be Thursday night at nine. Uh, Denver, ten o'clock. Chicago, eleven o'clock. And so Nashville. You guys in Central Time Zone, right? Right, Central Time. Yeah. So it'll be eleven o'clock for us. And so we'll be watching it, and uh, you'll hear the full song, and make sure that I say the right words. <laughs> Great. You might have not been saying lyrics. It just sounded like poetic, so I took them as lyrics. But maybe you were just preaching. <laughs> Speaking from the heart. Well, why don't we go Maybe. ahead with uh, let's listen to another clip here then. And this one is called He Knows. I don't even try to tell it all, mm. but God knows. Yeah, He knows. There is a story behind every scar. And I know, yeah, he knows. Cause I know the John calls and he made a way. And he's done so much for me that my words can't say. If you notice something different than how I praise, well, only God knows. He knows, he knows. Oh, beautiful. That's great. It's, it's groovy and it's short. I know. It's so short. That's mm. good thing we only have to wait till tomorrow. <laughs> right. It's only 24 hours or so. So, so what, 
how is this song how did this song come to life what what brought this he knows and, back into existence so like so like me between you know you kind of remind me a little bit of me sometimes like you are <laughs> i mean you're probably a little more angelic and you're from nashville <laughs> and you might be a little nicer um but we you know we're kind of those guys that you know um uh there's more to us sometimes than we even let on and there's more that got got us here um and there's and there's a certain gratefulness um and humility that you walk in because you realize all the areas in which you might have you should have been disqualified you shouldn't have even deserved this you know you had moments of lack of faith you had moments of lack of confidence you had moments of you know whateverness oh, yes. <laughs> and um so you're very aware of of all the things that you know god has kind of blessed you with and given you despite yourself and so this song is all just about you know all those kind of like things and blessings and testimonies and stories and ways that he made um for me that i can't even sit here and tell you all about you know just he knows he knows all those stories I won't even try to tell it all. God knows. There's a story behind every scar. God knows. And so, you know, I think sometimes, especially in this uh, era, we're used to putting everything on Instagram. And we got a lot of stuff on Instagram. But there's some stuff that only God knows about. And this song is thanking him for those things. Mm. That's wonderful. I, I love that you mentioned that, you know, there's there can be a lot more going on. And that feeling of like, I get frustrated a lot of times by my own weaknesses, by this be, it, sometimes I get so frustrated by how, how clearly I can see what I don't have and where I fall short, what my weaknesses are. Sometimes they're just like, like smacking me in the face because they're just so right in front of me. But I think you mentioned something really wonderful is because of when you, bec even though that can be wary, wear on you and tire you out um, and disappoint you by seeing your weaknesses and you feel like you're not enough, that's where you, it becomes, I think it becomes so miraculous to see the divine hand be getting involved in your life. So yeah. I think that's a really wonderful point that you bring. It's the more weak we feel, the more we acknowledge that wow, there's something else involved here. God's involved in the details of my life. And I don't know why he gives so much to me when I feel so undeserving so many times throughout this whole journey. But he, he keeps showing and providing that he believes in me and that he has a hope for what I have to offer and what I can become. So I think that's wonderful. Now, I, I do have a, I have a question. A question because this... It says that God knows and he knows. And that can be a really comforting thing and a positive thing. But I think especially if people are learning to get to know God, it can be a scary thing to, mm. to think he is. And it's like he's watching yeah. me and I'm disappointing him. I'm just going to cut him out and pretend. I'm just going to try to ignore that there's even a God because there's too much guilt in that he's knowing everything that I'm doing when I shouldn't be or I don't even know how I'm supposed to be doing this I'm just going to even how how would you respond to people who are afraid of an all-knowing God and learn that it's a can be it's something good how how can those kind of people learn how to embrace that God is all-knowing in their life you know I was have you ever heard of this guy named Travis Green yes He's incredible, incredible uh, worship artist, and also a pastor. And he's also one of my one of my friends. And uh, one day I went to his church, and at some point in his message, he said something to the effect of, "You know, come to the light, because in the light there is exposure, but there's also love." And I think sometimes people they fear exposure so much, and then we don't really we can't even imagine God's kind of love that we kind of feel like the, the little bit exposure that we would get in these moments will, will absolutely be 
we can't imagine that it would be overshadowed by his just great love for us because we can't fathom somebody loving us that much as many times as we've smacked them in the face and we've done you know done some things that we shouldn't have done and we've been weak and we should have been strong and we you know we made promises and we broke them all those things we're we're, we're expecting the exposure levels and the disappointment levels to supersede the love levels and it can't it just can't his love for us the grace that he gives us even as the Bible says, even as sin abounds, grace even, it gets bigger. It covers it. So if this gets bigger, grace just gets bigger over it. And if this gets a little bigger, then grace just gets bigger over it. And we can't imagine that. But, you know, trust that everything that, that could make him mad, he has 10 times the reason to still smile and love. Think about a baby every time they get up and they try to walk and they fall. Right. Nobody around them is like, Mm, that baby ain't never gonna walk forget it and then they walk away that's not what happens you know we, mm -hmm. we root them on we cheer them on because what we're excited about is that they're even trying to walk mm -hmm. when you pursue mm -hmm. and you actually try even in those moments where you fall and in those moments where you show weakness and you can't stand up on your legs because you just started walking nobody nobody in heaven is getting mad at you they're rooting you on to try to encourage you to continue to walk because they know at some point you will be able to walk past that particular weakness. You will be able to stand above that particular thing that always brought you down. Uh, you will find your balance. You will find your stride. And, you know, I'm just really glad that, that heaven is rooting me and David on, even when we fall like little babies. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. My, I'm like going to take some notes here. That he's selling them. Or I guess I could just watch it back. But this is this is wonderful. Thank you, Jonathan. That's very nice. Amen. Thought. Yes. Amen. So uh, let's go to this next song. Uh, oh wait, should I answer some of Sydney's questions? Did you want? Was she oh, on that? Let me. Let me. I mean, these are some deep questions. I, I'm just like, how much do you know about this man? <laughs> You know, I think we put out things and we tell people about, you know, um, you know, what's going on with our lives. And I think we're surprised sometimes how much people pay attention and kind of keep a record of what we've been saying that we're doing or thinking and working on. I mean, so she asked like five million questions. I'm just like, <laughs> OK, so she her, now her name is um, her name is Sydney. She has a uh, Sydney Page 8 or something like that. She's a she huge Spanish. Broadway buff. She speaks Spanish. Um, she has a major in Spanish. She is a huge Broadway uh, buff. Great girl. But to me, the smartest person I know. I don't know, I don't know if anybody knows more information than she does. Um, awesome. So she wanted to ask you generally about how theater and Broadway um, has impacted, you know, your love for musical theater, how has that impacted you in a career? Uh, I know that he said he first got into singing by watching a VHS of Les Miserables over and over again. Right. And, and what was it like working with Andrew Lloyd Webber for Broadway Week on American Idol and right. rearranging Think of Me from Fan? I mean, this is so specific. <laughs> <laughs> it's creeping me out a little bit. So let's no, just say, what awesome. was it like working with Andrew Lloyd Webber? Let's let's do that. Yeah, Andrew Lloyd Webber, he's he's brilliant. You know, he of of all the judges we had, I mean, the guests like helping us on American Idol. We had Mariah Carey, we had Dolly Parton, Andrew Lloyd Webber. They were all wonderful. Andrew, I felt like he, Andrew Lloyd Webber was the most opinionated for sure. He had the most feedback and suggestions on and ideas of what we could do and I, I really liked I really liked how he really took into consideration how we could improve our performance and connect personally to the songs so that was really nice and then Les Miserables so my dad was in the musicals growing up because my grandma his mom was a performer in musical theater I never got to meet her because she died when she was 40 41 but um, I know her legacy was left with the musicals because all of her kids loved musicals. So we were moving to Utah, and my to keep us entertained, my dad put in Les Miserables, and it was like, "Hey, y'all, you gotta listen to this." 
And um, I, I don't know what it was. I didn't even understand what the story was of Les Miserables, but the music was just captivating me. I don't, I don't, I can't even describe why, but it did. I kept watching it the whole week. And that's how I, the passion for music was kindled in me through Les Miserables. So wow. that's, that's a little bit of, for Sydney to answer Sydney's question. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to put her name in the comments. So, uh, you know, you can follow her or, or something or everybody else can follow her. I mean, she really like does some amazing, amazing stuff. Like she does like this thing with Broadway bounding where she'll dress up like, you know, different characters. I mean, she's, she's pretty on the ball. But um, pretty entertaining to watch. Um, but awesome. yeah, she has lots. She has lots of questions over here. So <laughs> I'll ask you one more question. You can play a song, and then I'll ask another question, and then I'll let you off the hook. Okay. Um, <laughs> he right. said, "As a foreign language nerd, what made him want to do a, a kind of reverse crossover and go from singing pop after American Idol to not only Christian music but Christian music in Spanish?" Right. And do, do, do you prefer or find it easier to sing in one language of the other? Mm. That's interesting. Wow. I told you, these are deep. I was just like, oh. Y'all are deep. Um, <laughs> so I, you know, I, I, I had a hard time being open about being, ha, be, believing in God and how involved he was in my life until I took a break from music. I took a break for two years to be a missionary in Chile. And that's when I really learned Spanish. But my mom is from Central America. She's from, she's from Honduras. So I'd always wanted to do Spanish. I had done a couple of Spanish awards. I did a, they, I was in the Spanish We Are the World. They did Somos el Mundo. But I, I didn't really get any more involved. It, I didn't record anything until I came back and was fully fluent in Spanish. And I, I just didn't feel like I was under, I had some weird rules for myself. I'm like, well, I have to do this, I have to do that, because I thought it was what was expected of me to be a pop, just a pop singer, a pop guy. When I came back, I was like, you know what, I feel like I'll just try singing Spanish, singing some songs that have more of a spiritual side to it. So. I don't know if that's a good response, but that I guess that's my that's my answer. And then uh, that's good. What I guess I don't remember what the rest of your question was, but I don't know. All right. Cool. Uh, but yeah, let's well let's go here then. This one is Grace. Nice. Beautiful, man. This is, I'm excited for this project you have. Woo. Yeah, man. So before Brought the I, choir in for that one. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I was going to say, I was watching your live. I got to watch, a, I, I, I wasn't able to tune in live, but thank goodness she's, she saved it. I, she, she had brought up that this was your first, um, first time record, recording a song with a choir. Mm-hmm. That's the, yeah. So what first, because you you released a few albums before that, um, before this one. So what what made you decide to hold off on using the choir up until now? I mean, that would be like the normal gospel thing to do, right? Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It just never came up. And honestly, man, um, you know, when you first started, you're trying to find your your lane, you're trying to find your space. You know, I don't have the biggest voice in the world. I'm not 
I, 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 when I was in, you know, you know, growing up in church, I played the organ. I was never singing over a choir. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, just the amount of strength in your voice and richness or whatever that you feel like you need to have in order to pull off singing with the choir. I don't think I had, I didn't think that I had it. And so, um, you know, just over time, you just get more confidence in your voice and who you are, you start to stretch out. And so um, while we were writing this song, you know, I had another verse and a whole bunch of other stuff going on, but I realized, you know what? I think that a choir would say this better than me. And, um, you know, I guess people are starting to get used to me kind of covering a lot of different variety in my music anyway. So, uh, right. and now when you come back to the, uh, when you come back to another show with this song out, then everybody really will be singing in the audience because everybody <laughs> would be like a choir and I'm sure that everybody will enjoy that. Yeah. Right. The, uh, yeah, that's, that's funny. All right. They're singing everything. They're everyone. In, in your audience, they're literally singing. My favorite is when everyone's singing in cycles. The, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, that's so. <laughs> Hold up. Go ahead. Let's hear Everyone's you do it, David. Down, too. Let's hear you do it. Me, I, I might be too nervous to do it. Uh, you got it. Uh, oh, no. I can't do this. Yeah. Oh no, that that's was good. Yeah. That was good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's, oh, no. Man, that's yeah. Hard. The lyric when it says, um, "This is sorry." This is where the fans out of me comes out. But when it says, uh, "See the devil, he learns from your mistakes." Oh, see, I can't even say it. I have to say. You even sound good, you man. Don't. Oh, the devil! I can't. I have to hear it with the melody in my head. But I love that line. It's so good. Thank you, man. Oh, you sound good. The, hey, you should consider. You you should consider like singing for a living. <laughs> Try that. Let's see if it works. Oh, you know, I've thought about it, man, but I don't know. I've... You could probably do real well, like even if you got into like a national televised contest, <laughs> you might be pretty good. You might feel well, man. Oh, uh, but you know, but my tree business is doing so well. I, I, I'm not sure. <laughs> you know, I'm kind of comfortable with where I'm at right now. Yeah, oh, man. You know, you know your accounting, really your accounting firm. <laughs> That's what's no, up, man. It. Uh, so there's a line here that I really liked in the song of Grace. You for, you forget. I think it was something like you forgave me more than I thought you ever could. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. So I needed your grace more than I ever thought I would. You forgave oh. more than I ever thought you could. Oh. And um, uh, yeah, it's just you know I think, uh, man, I growing up and. You know, you you, you kind of know, Dave, that you're kind of a good guy. You know, you're not one of the you're not one of the the real big jerks. You're not one of the real <laughs> big, you know, crazy, you know, whatever is out here. But you know, so sometimes I guess you know you grow up and you you assume that you won't make too many mistakes in life. You know, you won't need God to forgive too many things. I mean, you know that there are going to be people that are doing some crazy things out here. God's going to have to use a lot of his forgiveness money on them. But he shouldn't have to spend too much on me. I mean, I'm not going to do too much. I might run with scissors a couple times, but I ain't going to do too much. And then, you know, you actually go through college and you go through all the period after college and you, you get into your 30s and you realize I have needed a lot more grace. I needed <laughs> God to use a lot more of that forgiveness money on me than I ever would have expected. And, you know, I... And the, the standard that I held myself to, even though there was nothing really wrong with the standard, I, I certainly did not meet it. And, you know, I needed God to forgive way more than I ever thought he could for me. Um, yes, everybody hashtag forgiveness money. Um, and, and, and so I'm just really, uh, that song came out of a, a place of like, man, I, I'm terrible sometimes. And I'm just really grateful uh, that God loved me in spite of it. And actually, he actually surprised me with how much he could love me through some of my mess. 
Mm. Oh, that is so true. I feel like what's interesting is the times where we can most disappoint ourselves. And, you know, you're, you're like, you know, I've got this, I can, it's almost sometimes I'm like, I know it's faulty thinking, but sometimes in my head, I start believing that I think I need to prove myself to God, like show him, yes, I deserve to be close. I, I, let me prove myself to allow me to be close to you or to allow me to feel your love and to feel your spirit. And the times where I, where I feel like I've messed up the most and felt the most broken and m most of that just hurt that it's like, I'm never, I'm never going to get there to that expectation I have of what I think I need to be. And uh, that, and when I felt most ashamed, the moment before I came to God, just feeling like, man, I, I did it, man, I'm, I, I'm over this time. I, I blew it. I, 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 what, what was I thinking? I was doing this stuff and I shouldn't have been. And, and the moment when I turned to him and just said, I'm broken and I know I've messed up and I just want to know what I need to do, please. And it's like when I felt most broken and ashamed and erroneous is when, is what you said, it's like he, you feel that forgiveness when you acknowledge what you've done, that you are imperfect. And it is so beautiful. It's like, then he's like, now you understand how I work, that you don't need to hide. You're not, I don't need you to try and be like, no, everything's fine. What do you mean? Nothing's going, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. He's like, I don't need you to be that. I need you to becoming broken so that I can show you what I can do with your brokenness. And I, that's when I felt the power of forgiveness coming to him and just saying, I'm sorry for just being who I am. And he just says, I love you so much. And uh, he heals you. He heals you from your own, your own opinion of yourself. That's how I've, how, what I've experienced. Ooh. Ooh. I, good. So I, it's just, anyway, it's. I mean, you gotta is, think. That's why I love that line. You gotta think like the prodigal son, there's a story in the Bible about the prodigal son who, who kind of, you know, he, he was, he had his, he took his dad's money. Well, he took his like air money, which you're really not supposed to get until your dad dies. You get it. He, he decided he wanted to take it early. He wanted to go and spend it and have his little wildlife and whatever. He went out there, had his wildlife, did all, uh, all the mistakes, lost all his money. And then he was like, man, I'm going to have to go back um, because I'm, I'm, this is a terrible life out here. Maybe I can at least go back and, you know, just kind of be a servant for my dad. You know, I've lost my sonship with him, so let me just be a servant. So he goes back, he has his head, and, oh, Dad, I'm sorry. And I'm, I just can only imagine that he was in the middle of, like, an explanation. You know, Dad, I'm really sorry, I'm just sorry. You know, I lost all the money, and then what happened was I went to blah, 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 blah. But, I mean, can I at least just come and be, like, your, 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 can I at least mow the lawn or something like that? I just want to come back and just be, and Dad, before, he didn't even listen to all that. He just went and hugged him. And gave him a ring and threw a party. There wasn't even so much explain yourself, son. It wasn't even any of that. It was just kind of like, we're I, I got you and I love you. Yeah, and we're expecting I think we're that always to come. Ex anticipating the shame on you, explain yourself. How could I think we're always anticipating that. And oh, we need to just be, be humble enough and brave enough to, to work past that fear and still sh show up to God, you know? Because it's mm -hmm. so beautiful. It's so beautiful what he can do in that moment. But that's a great, I, lo I love that story. So, yes, sir. So I, I, I want to make sure we don't cut off before hearing the, the final one. The final one we've got is the one you've got out now. Uh, people. Yeah. So uh, let's uh, play this. This is a great one. They are the best and the worst you've created Loving and hating and opinionated Loners in basements and those congregated Dilemma me Far from the peace for sure I was sinking Deep in the ocean of thoughts they were thinking 
Don't know what validation I was seeking Deliver me from people, people Oh, that Oops. Uh, that next line is so good. Snippets, David. Snippets. Huh? Huh? I know. Snippets, David. Snippets. Snippets. <laughs> <laughs> Even though this song is out, and you can go listen to it right now in its totality, with yeah, a reprise. Everybody's already singing. People, people. Yeah. That next line. When you yeah. said, was it? When you said you could save me from. When you said you could save when me said, from anything. You said you could heal me. You said you me. could heal me from anything. Yeah. Anything. What about people? Oh, that's so good. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Thank you, man. And that they, that was that was and that's the truth. That is a very honest song. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, again, we have our own opinions of ourselves, which are sometimes fragile, sometimes off, and then they can sometimes be reinforced uh, in a bad way by other people. And you know, if you already didn't think you were good enough then you're going to start hearing all the people that don't think you're good enough either. Even if there are 10 times more people that think you're great. Um, you know, I don't know how many times you have put out a song and, you know, all of the, the true archangels out there, they're like, <laughs> we love this song. And there's like three people that are like, nah, I don't like it that much. And we pay attention more to them than all of the wonderful archangels that loved it. And right. so, um, you know, it's just one of those things where, the song is not about people. It's not about the people, you know, and what they need to do and, and what's wrong with them. No, it's really about what's wrong with us and how much um, significance and how much weight we put on other people's opinions, how much we are depending on them to kind of show us things that we either need to know ourselves or we need to get from God. Right. Oh man, yeah, and I I remember you and Jordan talking about this. Yeah, you had a, such a great conversation with that, because it's like the ninety five percent of positive feedback, and you just fully focus on that five percent. I think is what y'all were saying. Yes, yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. And then it's like you try, and then it's like suddenly your focus and shift. At least for me, it's like it suddenly sh shifts to be like, what can I do to change this person's mind, or how can I? How can I yeah. get them to not think so? And it's like, sometimes it's, it's not a battle worth fighting because people aren't always, you can't please everybody. And you shouldn't let the negative people become your master either. You know, mm. you, you start worshiping false idols, you know, the, 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 yeah. the approval of these people who aren't looking for anything positive in you. They're just trying to, but it's such a bad habit at the same time to just, wait, but do they like me now? I don't know. What can I do so people can like me more? It's just a dangerous place you can go with your mind. But a lot of people are asking yeah. if I make sure I stand or an hour. I think we're good. Still have 12 minutes, but. but that oh, yeah, we started it. About two. I yeah, no. I, I realized I started the song before I should have answered uh, Sydney's question. I, I, I apologize. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'm sure she was like. Oh, I, I don't know. I don't know if she's on right now. If she's on, she's probably too embarrassed to say anything. Um, uh, but I'm sure she'll at least watch it. She might be at work right now. Um, let's see. What she didn't want to ask you, she says, I'm sure there are a bunch of girls asking him if, if he's single. So I'm not going to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm not going to ask you, are you single? <laughs> but I'm just sure that people are asking you if you are single. Oh, yeah. Yes, they do. They ask. <laughs> well, thank thank you, Sydney, okay. for not asking. No, I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Good stuff, David. Good stuff. I love it. I love oh, it. Man. Well, thank you for not asking. I really appreciate that no. you did not ask. <laughs> yes, I'm sure. I'm sure uh, if. You you appreciate the same question not being asked to you. I don't know. I'll get asked all the time. It's so annoying. <laughs> it's annoying. Don't know. you know I'm more than just a piece of marriable meat? <laughs> That's what I want to say to them. Um, um, I, a lot of people are asking about singing a little bit here now, Jonathan. Now, I know you sang a little bit on Jordan's 
Uh, would you be up to singing a little bit of something before we close here? We've got probably 10 minutes before we close. Or do you got Yeah, one? man. Um, I'm trying to see if any of these guitars that are sitting here looking pretty actually work. My sister's here, Lambe Rouge. That's my sister. She's in here. She went with me to oh, really? Memphis concert. She loves her music. Oh, nice. People know when they get into a car with me that they're gonna they're gonna hear at least some Jonathan McReynolds. If they hadn't heard of him, that's what's up. That's I can welcome. I'm gonna introduce you to Jonathan McReynolds. <laughs> oh, this guitar is quite dry to the point that the the highest string is sounding uh, kind of strange. Pretty. <laughs> um. Mm. Oh, both so if you guys promise that you are going to watch the video tomorrow, so the the we're doing a whole premiere of the music video tomorrow night. So it'll be uh you know Friday Thursday night going into Friday morning. Uh, 12 o'clock for people in New, in New York, 9 o'clock for California, 11 o'clock for people in Chicago or Nashville, and so on. If you guys promise, then I'll sing a different song. What's your favorite song from the old album? From Make Home? Mine? Oh my mm -hmm. goodness. Man. Why are you making me choose? I... Goodness. I love Christ Representers. I love Make Room. I lie. I love No Gray. I mean, Make Room is beautiful. There's a lot of people are saying, oh, Cycles is. I'm trying to think of a key. Yeah. I don't want to live a crazy life. I don't want to pick a crazy wife. <laughs> I don't want to be that crazy guy who lost what I had inside. Mm -hmm. I don't want the sinner's destiny. I don't want to miss what's best for me. So I'm going to take what's left of me. Swallow fight and least I I gotta make a sincere effort to be all that you call in me God I just don't wanna stay here living beneath I owe it to me to at least try so I'm gonna try 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 I'm going to try, 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 try a little harder this time, this time, this time. I'm going to try, 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 try. Oh. Yeah. yeah. I haven't sung that in a very long time. Oh, dude, I'm so glad you did. I love that song. Thank I you, man. Effort to be all that you want me to be, God. Yeah. I love that. So you good. sound amazing. What am I doing here? No, dude. We, we Why do I sing when goes. you have a David? Nah, man. What do you need Jonathan for if you have a David? <laughs> <laughs> because I sure can't come up with all the songs you come up with, the lyrics on. Man, I just love it. It's, it feels like, like I said, it's a, like a buddy speaking to you. But Jonathan, thank you so much for letting me uh, have you come on and for talking and sharing all you've had. I know everyone no, man, I'm wants honest. to sing with you sometime. We'll have to sing something sometime as well down the road. That's the when, truth. When you finish singing with everybody else. Oh, come on, man. No, I, I listen, I'm a fan of you and a fan of your voice and a fan of how you carry yourself and, and the and the, the care that you show, the humility that you show. Um, you know, I, that, that means a lot to see and, and you know, I'm I'm definitely comfortable with my cousin 
being a true stand of David uh, Archuleta. Now, maybe somebody else I'd be like, do you really want to like him that much? But no. Um, no, man, I'm a big fan. And yes, we are absolutely going to do something together, man. I'll play the guitar, you play the, the piano, and we and we go for it. All right. Sounds cool. good. No, thank you, man. Thank you. I, I do have some stuff. Maybe we can do a live. We can listen to some of my stuff. I've got an album coming out next month. Nice. And a song Let's do this. coming out next week, actually. But I haven't announced that yet, but Y'all, a new song next week. <laughs> you guys Thank know. you, Jonathan. Yeah, just let me know. And I'll I got check you. it out Friday. The, the video, with all the video on YouTube as well, at midnight, Eastern time. Check it out. Jonathan, God bless you, my brother. Love you, man. God bless you, too. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll, we'll see you. I'll save this now. <laughs>